Hey everybody, Roxbox90 here with more M15 spoilers, and today we have Jace. Before the weekend, like I was saying, we have Jace, the Living Guild Pact, and a lot of other much cooler cards, but we'll start with Jace because he's the Planeswalker of the day. Two and two blue for a five loyalty Planeswalker who's plus one, look at the top two cards, put one in your graveyard, minus three, return another target, non land permanent, two turners hand, and then minus eight, each player shuffles his or hand and graveyard into his or library, and you draw seven cards. Alright, so his plus one is, eh, look at the top two cards. It's pretty much an effective scry 1.5. It's almost a scry. It's good for late game. Again, if this is for mid-range or late game control, that's good because you'll be, you'll probably look at two, one as a land to get rid of the land. It's almost as if you're setting yourself up to draw a card. It's a slightly better, it's like scry 1.5, which is, eh, it's not great, but it's not horrible. Minus three, bouncing a permanent, though, matters. Not in every deck. I think Architect of Thought is much better in its design to handle lots of small attackers, aggressive decks. This card is built to handle large creatures, mid-range decks that rely on one or two huge creatures to smash the game. The problem with him, of course, is that even if you minus three things like Storm Breath Dragon, the Storm Breath Dragon has haste, which can kill him immediately, pretty straightforward, uh, and can also attack you. So four mana to bounce, to slow their turn and then save you an attack can be decent, can be pretty decent for control builds. And minus eight is insane in every format. The fact that he wipes everyone's hand out and graveyard and then only you draw seven cards, keeps them in top deck mode to the end of the game, which means you are pretty much guaranteed to win, period. EDH Commander, of course, as well, even in that format, you're guaranteed to be so far ahead of everyone else that you're probably going to be winning. EDH Commander's minus three is okay, his plus one. I think the main thing people are missing here is that he can hit play four mana for a six loyalty planeswalker. That's no joke. That much loyalty like a Johnny Call of the Pride, can matter a lot for his cost. So I would say we'll give him a chance. He may not see immediate impact in Standard Constructed. He probably won't see much play outside of Standard Environment, maybe in Cube a little bit or EDH Commander, but he will have an impact at some point, I think. Then we have Prim and Captain, a reprint weird that they're having a kithkin again it's like this set is the weirdest lore stuff i don't know where all these random cards from random sets are coming from but this one was a pretty overpriced rare and it's being reprinted it could work very well with soldier aggro if you have uh, we have things like elspeth around and brimaz and the like <clears throat> big creatures that work well with his effect so if they just need a print captain of the watch and this card will be really solid especially for casual then we have a reprint of Urborg. This is a huge win because Urborg is a $30 plus card, really just because of its rarity, not because it's there's a reason for it to be that overpriced. Foil makes sense because it's an EDH commander staple and does see a play as well in cube and it, a bunch of formats. It's very good, very good card. I'm happy that they're making a reprint though to get let more people get their hands on it, especially if they kept the original art, which I love. For those who don't know what it does, it give, makes all swamp makes all lands swamps in addition to the other types, which gives mono black decks a nice solid uh, land base, and they can have l utility lands that also give them swamps, which means a lot more in other formats than limited. But the fa the main reason this is cool is because it's a great card, and because as a reprint, it'll help people lay hands on their copies, spread the love. Then we got Hushwing Griff, the most Powerful, awesome card of today. Three for a 2-1 flash. Remind you of somebody named Mind Sensor. Flying. Creatures entering the battlefield don't cause abilities to trigger. Whoa. A nice flyer with flash that can undercut creatures entering the battlefield. The most prominent creature in my mind, besides the fact this really hurts Birthing Pod, almost any Birthing Pod decks, this card is so strong because it kills Stoneforge Mystic. Not the first Stoneforge Mystic, usually, because it's three mana. But this card kills Stoneforge Mystic, really hurts Birthing Pod, and I think that this is going to be a multi-format staple. 
will definitely be an option for a lot of places, and the foil at least will be highly expensive, especially since it's being printed at rare. Keep an eye on this guy. Constricting Sliver 6433, that gives all your slivers the ability that when they enter the battlefield, exile target creature and opponent controls until the creature leaves the battlefield. This might seem overcosted to you, but trust me, this ability is absolutely unfair. Turning all your slivers into banisher priest things are is really ridiculous, especially in EDH Commander. That's the main place this will see play. Maybe some casual stuff as well. Life's Legacy 2 for a sorcery. You have to sack a creature and draw cards equal to the sacrifice creature's power. Interesting, the fact that it's so cheap means it has a chance of being useful, especially, I don't even know especially where, but in Commander this card will have the options. I'm not really sure how to make it the most effective because it's two and lose a creature, but it can be a really strong draw card engine. Maybe mono green somehow? I don't really know how to make that work, but it's an interesting design. The art is also pretty interesting. And the last card we have Banishing Light as the FNM promo for September. Cool in that it's a playable card and upon rotation will probably be worth something, given that Detention Sphere is leaving. But really, this art is just... Ugh, it's so blah, terrible compared to the original epic art. So I'm expecting this card to be low on the value chain. Even if it goes up, the original one's going to be much, much more expensive. Let me know your guys' thoughts about all the stuff here, and if you enjoyed the video... Tap the like button, and if you're new to the channel, check in and subscribe for all the amazing spoilers. I have another top 10 list, the top 10 bant cards coming to you guys really soon. And as always, Rocks the Box 90 signing out. I'll see you guys next time.